Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our TGIF and Product Owner episode this week with Boyan Smudia. Hey, Boyan. Welcome back. Hey. Hello, I just need to shame myself because five days passed while we started this interview. You know? <laughs> Indeed, it yes. was five days ago we started talking, but now it's Friday and soon we will all be able to rest and uh, get some energy back over the weekend. So cool. let's talk product owner, Boyan, and uh, we'll talk about a great product owner in a minute, but let's start with potentially the worst product owner anti-pattern you've witnessed in your career <laughs> yes of course <laughs> well uh, i will not uh, name a person uh, because uh, now i believe that person is one of the greatest product owners but we all learn uh, it was a team of uh, novices i would say not even junior but novices product owner for novices uh, and uh, they were building uh, product uh, already on the market so really uh company was successful the team was delivering something real so it is uh, not a startup uh, a story uh, but uh, somehow there was a misconnection between what is on the drawing board uh, it was even i would say before the jira was a trendsetter you know so we have stickers on the board you can imagine and what was on the real product Meaning uh, there is not a single connection in the product owner mind uh, how the things from, uh, let's say, technical stuff which are here uh, for the developers are translated to the features which real users are using. Of course, uh, you can imagine how was it. It was pretty terrible. Uh, I was new Scrum Master, so I would say it is not the uh, anti-pattern of the product owner. It is always anti-pattern of Scrum Master not to help and coach product owner into this, you know. But essentially, we lost track of why we are building this. That is essentially one thing. And we didn't uh, have uh, that uh, feedback uh, loop uh, until it was too late. And you know? what, what do you mean by that feedback loop? Feedback loop that uh, our customers told us, oh my God, what you are building is totally nonsense. I can uh, tell you just one thing. Uh, we built a remote control, which was uh, switching the TV when you not push the button, but when you press the button. And because when you push it, you expect that the TV channel is uh, changed. Nobody wants to push it, but they are pressing it stronger and stronger. From the, let's say, development perspective, it's a one common push or press, you know. But uh, from the perspective of a human, you will never, you know, <laughs> relieve the button. You will always push it even harder, you know, until it's switched. So th th that is one thing uh, which we didn't anticipate. It. Yeah, and it's very critical for product owners. And of course, we need to help them. It's very critical for product owners to make sure that they have the right feedback loops, right? Like in, in this example, of course, I'm sure that if the developers and the product owner would have looked at the customer's faces, they wouldn't be smiling like the one no, you were talking no, about yesterday. No. And, and they would know, okay, there's frustration here. When there's frustration using a product, that's great information. Of course, that means we failed with something, but that information is very important for us to be able to redress the problem and, and, and create a better product, right? Great. And coming back to your uh, second question, which is, let's say, great thing. Well, uh, having a... Uh, to work with a lot of product owners in Toyota, uh, we uh, can really see that uh, there is a one, uh, you know, pattern which is called Genshi Genbutsu, uh, meaning go and see on, on, with the real customers, the real stuff. And uh, I really, you know, encourage uh, our product owners to do like this, uh, to first go from the comfort zone in, in front of your computer and your team and everything else, really to go to the real site where uh, 
your product is used or could be used if you are delivering something new to test it in the real or as real as possible environment uh, and uh, to talk with uh, perspective or real customers. So th that is, let's say, uh, one thing uh, which is at least for me the most important. Everything else is not so important, meaning you will learn technicalities. You will learn how to make roadmaps. Then you will learn how to make uh, uh, roadmaps, uh, roadmaps which your stakeholders expect to look like. You know, you will uh, learn every everything from the metrics, etc. But uh, speaking with your customer and getting the real pains from uh, them on the site where they experience them is, I would say, something which uh, is uh, really important, of course. I would say that in some big organizations, it's not uh, that product owner is a single person which needs to do everything. When there is a big organization, you can have that luxury to have user researchers or team of user researchers, then a user experience, uh, engineers, analysts, etc., in order to employ them. But important is that you adhere to the process of Genshi Genbutsu. And if you are doing like this, uh, I believe that you cannot create something which customers will not like. Absolutely. Uh, see the smiley faces as the product owner from yesterday and used to exactly, say. That is, that is exactly that product owner because <laughs> he sees smiley faces, he knows that he employed Genshi Genbutsu in the right way, you know. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about a great product owner. And when we talk about great product owner, we want to focus on, of course, their attitude and their perspective, but also the concrete aspects that either they got help with or they learned by themselves that make them a, a great product owner and the team successful. So share that with us. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and uh, uh, this is uh, coming back because we are, let's say, in Scrum Master podcast. Uh, one thing which uh, Scrum Masters forget is that uh, you are not just a babysitter for a team, you know, uh, speaking, you know, metaphorically. Uh, maybe the most important part which you can do, which can be visible uh, and uh, beneficial to the whole company, is coaching the product owner. You know? uh, and of course, uh, I do not expect that somebody who is junior or novice, uh, who never created uh, his own product, can coach somebody who is doing uh, further product in a row. But uh, at least you can try. To mm. understand and, and you can ask for help when you can't do it, right? Because exactly. there are other people around us. Exactly. There are other people, but uh, essentially, when we say coach, really, you can be a real coach. You know, you, you, you don't need to be product coach. You can be coach to that person to really see. I believe that 99% of the answers are really in product owner already. You just need to facilitate the process and maybe to be that one part of impediment remover if something is bothering. But th th that is one stuff which uh, I, I really believe that uh, Scrum Master can play the most important role. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's go back to the product owner then. So, Boyan, describe for us the best product owner you've ever worked uh, with. How well, did they work? Uh, uh, the best product owners are uh, super multitaskers, you know. Uh, like they are drinking a Red Bull uh, and, uh, you know, jumping from one uh, uh, part of the room to another, uh, being on one meeting and, uh, you know, uh, putting uh, uh, Jira tickets uh, while they are there. But uh, when, you, when I'm speaking uh, all of this, you will say, but how did person do anything? Well, generally, no. Uh, Product owners are super focused salesmen. That is, they are focused on one single most important goal, and they are great salesmen which can sell that product vision to you. And everything else is just, you know, some mechanics, uh, which is a regular job. But uh, good product owners will not uh, become that by just doing Jira tasks, uh, attending meetings, uh, listening to stakeholders, even empathizing with customers. No, it will not make you being super focused and, uh, you know, having uh, a sales uh, traits, uh, but not to sell on the market stock exchange. First, you need to sell it to your team. 
even Scrum Master. Then we can talk about selling to others, you know. If you cannot sell it to your team, then you are not a good PO. That is uh, at least what is product owner for me. Sales yeah, team. and uh, of course, that is the first feedback loop that product owners already have there, right? If they can't explain exactly. their idea to the team who knows the product very well, then that's a sign that maybe they can't explain it to the customer or the stakeholders either, right? It's a very right. important feedback loop. <laughs> Uh, I like the uh, idea of being salespeople because it is indeed a lot about creating the motivation, which we talked about on Tuesday was lacking in that team. It is about uh, uh, conveying to the stakeholders what the, what the team and the product owner are trying to deliver to the market so that they get the buy-in and, and of course the sign-off for what they want to do. Uh, it is about selling the vision to the team. Uh, it is about uh, it, when the team depends on other teams, it's about selling the importance of the work that they need to do to other teams as well. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, convincing and motivating that product owners need to do. Um, I, I do want to say that the coaching course that we have here on the podcast, you can find it in the show notes, is, is a, an invaluable resource for us to get used to the idea and also learn concrete tools on how to coach those product owners because it's not enough to want to coach you also have to know how to coach product owners. Uh, I like that you said that you don't need to be a product coach because the product owners typically have the answers within them, but you might need to be a facilitation coach, a communication coach. You might need to help them to structure the way they present their vision. You might need to help them practice their sales speech and so on and so forth. And these are all things that the course tackles directly. So uh, check it out in the show notes. Boyan, we're getting close to the end, but before we go, yeah. do share with us, where can people find out more about you and the work that you're doing? Well, generally, the LinkedIn is the best place. Definitely, uh, you can uh, post uh, my uh, you know, LinkedIn address uh, there. Uh, I'm uh, working a few jobs, but uh, most, uh, let's say, uh, is uh, that uh, I'm an agile coach uh, within Kinto Groupation. So probably when you see some... Uh, new mobility product from Toyota, there will be a little part uh, on which I'm really proud of. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and we'll put for sure the link to uh, Boyan's LinkedIn page on the show notes so that uh, you, dear listener, can reach out and ask a few follow-up questions. Uh, uh, and uh, why not strike a conversation, help each other? Boyan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. Yeah, and thank you very much, Vasco, with your time and with your patience uh, asking me so much thoughtful uh, and enlightening questions, really. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over, but there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast host as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. So join us at scrummasterpodcast.com and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more full week of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.